Hi Stampers! So today I want to show you the mystery card in celebration of World Card Making Day. Now I have a little twist to mine. This is going to be somewhat of a gatefold card. If you haven't done yours already, you might want to give this a try, but I'm still looking forward to seeing all the creations you guys make using the samples provided. So again, we've just got a piece of cardstock that's 11 by 4 and a quarter. I've scored it on either end at two and three quarters. And then we've got two separate pieces of paper that I'm using designer series paper for, and they're cut to two and a half by four inches. And then I use the framelits, the, the layering square dies, I guess, sorry, the new terminology. And that's how I made this frame. But what I did do is I took an extra piece of paper in the vanilla um, to stamp on. And so I think in my picture that I displayed for you all, one of the squares was missing. So you'll just need one extra square. And you'll see why in a moment as we put together the gatefold card. Okay. And while I'm pulling out the supplies that we're going to need, I'll just point out that there is an October host code because I have a special gift for anyone that places an order in the next week in celebration of World Card Making Day. Um, that code is BFRSYQRV. So in case you're having trouble with that, but again, I'll post that on the page as well. Okay, so let's get started with the card. So again, I've got my four and a quarter by 11 piece of cardstock and it's scored at two and three quarters on either end. I'm just gonna use my bone folder to score. Just using that to get a really nice crease because we are gonna want these to stay closed. It's not gonna be perfect, but this is just better than using your hands. And then I'm using the paper from the Gather, I think it's called Let's Gather or Gather Together DSP. And I'm using the stripes and the pumpkins with the gold. I think it's just so pretty and it's fall. Um, but I realized I, have, I can't find my stamp and seal, so I wanted to show you what the new packaging looks like. So this is the new adhesive, the stamp and seal, and it comes with an easy to tear pack where you go like this, peel it, just like you do your frozen vegetables, open it up and it's in a little Ziploc bag, which is fantastic because you now have a little bag to store this in if you wanted to store it, or reuse this to store something else. And I'm sure you crafty ladies could find a way to decorate the front with designer series paper to make it all fun, the usable bag. The new seal also comes with a little clip, so you can either choose to keep that on so it doesn't get mucked up or take it off. But as you can see, I'm having difficulties there, so I'm probably just gonna leave mine off. So what I'm gonna do is start by putting the adhesive on the back of my card, but because this is brand new and of course I'm recording, it's not wanting to take right off the bat, but I'm just giving it, did you see I just kinda took my finger to give it a little pull and now it's starting to come. So I'm just putting adhesive on all four sides and putting it on. So if you're using pattern paper, when you cut it, just make sure the patterns are all going the way you want it. Um, the lengthwise for me here was the four inch. You also wanna make sure that when you're adhering it, that the patterns are going the right direction and not upside down. Cause that too, that is something I would do. There. So you've got your designer pieces on just like that. And now what we wanna do is layer this piece. And I'm just gonna pull out my mat. So I just wanted to let you guys know I had seen this from a lovely uh, stamper. Her blog is called, um, oh, Ink It, Ink It by Jessica. And she had shared this on Pinterest and it's a fabulous card. She had fabulous instructions. It was so easy. That's the reason why I felt this was a good card to share with everyone here today. So what I did is I've put adhesive just down the side and then just up a little bit. Now the key here is I do wanna make sure that I have it covered because this is now what I'm putting on this side. So I'm only adhering to the half of the card. I wanna make sure it's somewhat centered. So I've done this. And the idea is, is when you open this up, you don't want any adhesive on the inside here. So just double check. If there's some, pull out your little adhesive eraser or just rub it off with your fingers. But you just have it like this. So now what I'm going to do is I wanna stick this piece on. So remember I said it was somewhat of a gatefold. You'll see how that works out. 
I'm going to just put some adhesive on my pumpkin side, so just two strips. And of course, I'm having issues there because again, I'm on lot. I'll be on video. So all I'm doing is I'm adhering and I'm putting the crazy cage piece on that. So remember, I only had adhesive on the one side so that it doesn't stick on this side. And watch, you're going to watch the magic unfold here. So this is, like I said, a gate card that opens like this. Isn't that fun? So that's the reason why it was a layer and why I used the two squares. Um, so that I'm going to just open it again so you can see like this. So it should work with any shape, but I just thought this was oh so su super cute and fun. But I'm just going to put that aside because I do want to stamp on my little piece here. Now I'm going to use my foam. I just have a piece of the 8 by 8 grid paper here that I'm going to use as my base because I probably will stamp off a little bit larger. And now for this set, I'm using the beautiful Autumn Stamp Set, which is in the holiday catalog. Super fun set. And I'm using the words that say, my heart is grateful for you. Tis the season to be super thankful to all my friends, family, I'm sure even just your post person or anyone else, there's probably lots of people that you could give this wonderful heartwarming card to. So I am just trying to center it the best I can. You know, you guys could use your other tools that you have, but just for sake and ease of this, we're going to do that. I'm pretty impressed. I think I got that somewhat straight. So now what I want to do is I want to show you a little bit of stamping. Uh, using the leaves that come in this. So here I've got the maple leaf. I'm opening up the Crazen, sorry, Cajun Craze. I'm going to need a little bit of the espresso as well too. And what I'm going to do is just randomly stamp on the square here. Do I want two or three? Maybe we'll do three because I'm not too sure what I want here. And then I'm also going to use the little acorn that comes in this stamp because it too is super, super cute. As you can see, they're lined images, outlines. The stamp set does come with a filler where you could fill it, but that's not what we're going to do here. I'm probably overdoing it with the fun little images, but again, they're super cute. So what I'm going to do though, I know there's a lot of you who love to color with blends. Blends make it such a nice bold effect. Um, but today I'm actually going to use our blender pens. You remember these folks? Pull them out of your drawer. I'm sure it's been a while for some of you. But what I did now that I've stamped all these, I can actually just take my blender pen and I can just color it. So I'm just dragging the color of the stamped image and blending it around inside. So it's lightly coloring the area. So I'm doing the Crajan Craze first. Again, I'm just kind of blending it all in, little circular motions, just like this. Now when you're done, before you move on to the next color, just to make sure you get all the ink off, I'm just going to rub that off a little bit to make sure I'm ready for the next. Now I'm going to do the same with the acorns. So I'm just blending up top and blending down the side. You can do as much or as little as you want. Now the stamped image has the shadows here, so it's actually going to be nice and dark on that edge. And it'll give it kind of that shadowy look for you without having to add a whole bunch of color. Again, this is just your blender pen. It's no extra ink. You're just moving around what is already there. So I'm just going to put that up a little bit closer so you can see now it's all colored. Okay, so now that that's done, I am going to mount that. Woo, sorry, all my pretty paper. I'm just going to mount that to the front of my card and because okay so now that we have that all ready to go I just want to add a little bit of accents to it and highlight for you guys the beautiful designer series paper that does come as part of this collection has some pieces where it actually has stamped images of leaves acorns that coordinate with the punch set. Again, the maple leaf, the oak leaf, and the acorn all together. Super cute. 
So what I'm going to do is just do a punch out of the acorn. I may have to just snip, snip one out so that I can actually get it inside nicely into the punch without wrecking too much of the other shapes that I may want to punch out. And I need to do the leaf first just because it's right smack in the middle to allow me to get the other punch in. So we're just going to punch out lined up perfectly. So you can either stamp and use these punch or you can just get the paper and use the punch. It can be either or. You don't have to actually own the stamp set to have this cute little collection. Say so this is the beautiful final card. Now you can embellish it as much as you like with some of the other pieces, some punch outs of the acorns or leaves. Now a stamped greeting on the inside would be absolutely perfect. So I'm just gonna open that up and we'll use some early espresso and we're gonna just add the little thank you sentiment to the inside. Get that cleaned, put that back, and now your gatefold, just like that. Now I can't wait to see your cards, so please make sure you create them and post them below because I will be doing some fun draws a little later. Bye for now.